And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Golden Talia. That's going to be our next deck. So this is a Talia deck that's going to be almost all Sharima. And Talia is our only champion. And as far as the golden part, well, why we are calling it Golden Talia, because we're playing the Golden Ambassador with the Allegiance, draw a champion, grant it plus two, plus two. So this is going to be another way for us to find Talia because that's what our deck's really built around, is built around Talia. Now, we also have um, we have a lot of landmarks, and we're going to have a lot of card advantage in here, a lot of predict. So we'll have Ancient Preparations predicting. We're going to have um, Aspiring Chronomancer predicting. So those are going to be more ways for us to find Talia. And also, we can, you can use predict to uh, put whatever card on top of your deck, and so that can be a way to make sure that you hit your Allegiance with the Golden Ambassador. As far as non-cards, the cards that wouldn't hit the Allegiance, we only have two Targon cards in here. We got Zenith Blade and Veil Temple. Veil Temple, probably pretty obvious. Veil Temple's just amazing with Talia, because, uh, you know, making this, if we can continue to get other, uh, you know, a lot of cards, play two cards a turn, refill that two spell mana, and also grow our strongest ally, which should be Talia, to get, you know, keep growing Talia plus one, plus one. So basically our goal is, you know, build up Talia, make Talia very large, um, use Golden Ambassador, give it plus two, plus two. Have Siphoning Strike, give it plus two, plus two. Have Veil Temple, keep growing it. And then the other card that we're splashing in Targon is going to be Zenith Blade to be able to uh, give it plus one, plus two, and Overwhelm. So we get some Overwhelm in there with the Talia, because that's going to be really important. Of course, our leveled up Talia um, attacks for a ton, and it's great at getting rid of a blocker. And so Overwhelm going to be real important with it. So that's what we're doing. Um, let's see. That's kind of our deck. Just a bunch of landmarks, a bunch of cool little stuff, a bunch of Sharima cards, and, um, you know, finishing out with Talia and drawing more Talias with the Golden Ambassador. All right, let's give it a try. We're going to go play our five games in Ranked. All right, Twisted Kindred. That's a really cool combination, Twisted Fate Kindred. That's actually what we're going to be doing up next. <laughs> our opponent stole our idea. I haven't played against Twisted Fate Kindred yet. They stole our idea. All right, we're gonna mulligan the Dune Keeper because this should be this should basically be like a Go Hard deck. That's what I'm thinking. That's what our version is also. So I'm thinking this is like Go Hard, and we don't really want to play a two-one against Go Hard. All right, we already got one Veil Temple. Maybe we should just take a second Veil Temple though. Let's take another. else we got Ooh, love hourglass love ambassador love both of these cards i guess i'm going to take the hourglass just you know like i have lots of four mana cards in hand four and five so we'll take the two mana card No surprise there. All right, third landmark. Got a surprise for him. It's not safe. I see it. Fourth landmark. Suppose you want in on this. Oh, suppose I should leave you be. Suppose. I'm always up for a round or two. Eyes open. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna need to kill that thing. Gonna need to kill that thing. Ooh. That could be kinda cool. 
Alright, fifth landmark. So this is something I didn't really talk about in the deck before though, but I love the Ancient Hourglass Talia combination where because if we if we Ancient Hourglass one Talia and then we play a second Talia, copy the Ancient Hourglass, then we you know then we can get you know two new Talias to go along with our one that we had. So we can have three Talias in play with that combination. Alright, so they're passing here. Um I kind of think I'm just gonna pass also I know, like, I have a really good attack, but then I attack, then they play, like, all sorts of, like, card draw, and, you know, they use, like, all this mana. I'm gonna just go to the next turn. Because, like, I attack, they just block, like, one of these things. Like, all I, all I do is kill one thing. I, my Talia doesn't have overwhelm. Like, I guess I do four damage, but whatever. Alright, this Twisted Fate's at four. Um... The Emperor commands, the land obeys. So basically, Vengeance is like their, their fast speed card that kills my Talia. Alright, no Vengeance man anymore. And they can... Uh, okay. So I think I just play this Spirit Fire and just kill all their stuff. Suppose you want in on this. Oh, it's too bad. Hey Goomba, games are going good. We need our Zenith Blade. Deal me in. Hold it, partner. Throw another rock. Always forward. Say your farewells. Keep cheering. Hmm. <laughs> These are. These aren't the best. Um, these aren't the best. I was kind of hoping for the Howling Abyss. Right? I was kind of hoping for that. Alright, probably too many Veil Temples. No Howling Abyss here. I could grab another Talia. Or not Howling, but sorry, sorry. Uh, Zenith Blade. No Zenith Blade here. I grab another Talia, get this thing to predict, or just skip. I think I'm just going to skip. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. Because really, it's it's about the Overwhelm right now with the Zenith Blade. And also, removal for Twisted Fate. Keep up, keep up. Those are the important things for us to find. Cool. Got his Zenith Blade. Where we go. They retreat. Wanna play it with the Daybreak? Yeah, good skip, good skip. Gotta go with the flow. I'll just replace that thing to not let them just cast go hard immediately and kill something and then kindred. Howling Abyss. Never. 
Looks like I'm on a hot streak. This is not good. Because now just you know now it's a lot easier for them to get gold card. Up, Zed. If they can't get gold card, you know, like we kill them. Relax your knees. It's pretty likely they're going to be able to gold card, though, right? I mean, I guess like their deck doesn't usually play all sorts of fast speed spells, but they probably have vengeance. They probably have Vengeance. I guess I play Zed... Like, so that's the thing. It's like, do I play Zed first? Playing Zed first makes it easier for them to get to gold card. I wish I still had, like, the Overwhelm thing for the Zed. Because I think it's... I think it, I think the most likely thing here is that they cast Vengeance on Talia. I think that's the most likely thing that's going to happen this turn. Without a sound. Yeah, I've, I, I already cast both Zenith Blades on this Talia, didn't I? Oh, I didn't cast the other one. What am I even saying? The other one's just sitting right here in my hand. I don't even know what's going on with life right now. Soak it in. <laughs> Playing against Twisted Fate's a nightmare? Yeah, it really is. them down to 13. Nothing gets marked, right? No. Some rocks just won't sit still. This should be go hard on the on the Zed. Or not. Oh, right, they just do that and mark it out. All right, so what happens if I H an Hourglass this? Will it still be marked whenever it comes back? Yeah, it will still be marked. Hmm. Oh, I should I should have chose Skip. Right, I forgot. Skip Skip's an option. Because I need to find some kind of removal spell for this. Twisted Fate. We need to be able to give Talia a challenger, right? Like, that's what we need. We need Talia to have a challenger. Yuck. Rock Hoppa. So Talia and a bunch of landmarks is cool, but still Twisted Fate and drawing millions of spells. Still maybe better. As the serpentine. Game's not over yet. To heal and protect. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna force them I'm gonna force them to have vengeance. Or triple fast spell. Oh no, because it's going to come back stunned now. I need to hourglass that before. Oh yeah, it's going to come back stunned, isn't it? Okay, now the game's over.
the reason, so I was thinking, like, my immediate thought was, let that get stunned so that my other things can block, and then I'll get rid of it. That was, like, my immediate thought, but then, you know, it comes back and it's gonna be stunned. Because if I get rid of it, then, then the gold card hits something else. And that's why I didn't want to happen, was that. The biggest thing, like, the biggest mistake that I had that game is I, I played that seven mana spell that killed, like, four of their little tutus, but none of those tutus mattered. I needed to hold on to that seven mana spell until they played another Twisted Fate and have that kill Twisted Fate. That's, that's like, that was the one decision that if I just do that that decision differently, that's, you know, probably a different game. I, you gotta kill Twisted Fate, right? So, like, none of those tutus mattered. That was my big mistake. I like Naturalist the Preservarium. So I'm gonna go turn two Rock Hopper. Turn three Preservarium. Turn four Naturalist. Yeah, the Spirit Fire. That was my my misplay last game was getting rid of that Spirit Fire. Cool. I don't think that's a very good troll chant for them. I mean, I don't know what what's what else is in their hand, but I'm probably saving that troll chant for like a champion or something. Because all they did was save this like three one with vulnerable, right? Like a, a three one with vulnerable is not a not a valuable card, and so they they did not save a valuable card. Yeah, now Culling Strike a 2-drop. This is going good for us so far. I mean, we don't know what's in their hand. Like, I guess like their hand must just be all these spells, right? And so they just have nothing else to do with the spells. Alright, so we'll come back frostbitten for just a frostbitten and vulnerable for a turn. But I want to save my 5 4. Golden Ambassador. Man, our life's difficult. So, because I, I can play Ambassador and Chronomancer and then play Talia. I can do all of that, but I don't have the board space. But of course, if I attack, but then, you know, then I won't even get like the plus one plus ones for attacking first either. I'm just passing. Okay. I wait a turn. We get our 5 4 back. We get this. This Preservarium goes away. It looks like we find a Talia anyway. Ooh, I like that right negation. I will unite the Freljord. Today, Ash, you'll see true leadership. We live in hallow times. That's fine. I mean, I guess I could counter it. But if I don't counter it, I get more room to do stuff. But what else is this Rite Negation doing? 
Because Ash levels up with the attack. Yeah, what happened? Oh, I don't have the mana to play that, Talia. Whoops. Sweet Daisy. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. Stand and fight! My aim is true! Don't touch it! I try. Making big overwhelm maybe not the best against Frostbite. This is a very weird deck to pilot, yes. I have I have been noticing that too, just like while playing these like We have a lot of decisions and our decisions are odd. This is this is definitely a deck you'd want to practice with a good amount with. You know, like don't don't feel bad about like making mistakes like the first game, two, three, four with this deck. This is one that you you really need to practice with. And just Talia in general as a champion, I think, is like that. Like this Talia is not an easy like it's not just like a play your your Ash and your Sejuanian attack, or play your Renekton, your Azir, you're just attacking. Like, this is a difficult champion to, to um, really build with and play. We fight for one Frail Yord. Leave no survivors. Your strongest enemy, your strongest ally and the weakest enemy strike each other. So we have the 10-4 strike the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, like this is not a bad Nox Cryo deck. <laughs> but how can we say no to leveled up Aurelian Soul? How can you say no to that? Mm. All right. How can you say no to leveled up Aurelian Soul? Took the bait. We'll be fine with two Veil Temples. Don't really need a, need a third. Sharpen the blades, secure the kill. Want to challenge something with that? Whoa, what is this attack? Is attacking with these things too? Really? What are we, what are we doing over here? Huh. I don't know what we're doing over there. Leveled up Fiora. Cosmic Inspiration. Okay, our deck's pretty sweet. <laughs> getting ha getting Howling Abyss. Definitely when I was looking at like regions to splash, you know, we ended up with the with Targon basically because we want, really wanted Overwhelm with Talia. And, you know, Veil Temple is nice. But I definitely thought about just splashing for all Yord and just playing like one Howling Abyss, but we got Talia's champion spell for that. 
Oh no, they're gonna be so aggressive. Why so angry? <laughs> Do you want a Chronomancer? Maybe one Chronomancer. I love the Shape Stone. That can be very good in combat. Are right, we just unlocked between those games? We just unlocked the the, the, Kali, the Talia card back. Yeah. The Talia card back. So we got that now. Right of negation, very important against their fight spells. Yeah, I agree. This is a this is a a real fun deck for sure. Not the easiest to play, like I said, but definitely a really fun deck. Okay, so they attack, we block. In position. Behind you. Keep your distance. Love it. We got this. I like the siphoning strike. I also kind of like the Doom Keeper. Being able to go two drop, one drop with the Doom Keeper. If we want to go aggro, we go Doom Keeper. Um, we're not going to take a Rock Hopper. Um, we could also skip. I think it's either like Siphoning Strike, Doom Keeper, or skip. Um, but like next, so like next turn, am I, I going to want to play Rock Hopper plus Shape Stone, or am I going to just want to play the Doom Keeper? Probably not the Doom Keeper. All right, so either Strike or, or skip. I'm going to skip. The strike only works really against LeBlanc. Sands beneath me and winds behind me. And they they don't really want to play LeBlanc into Roiling Sands anyway. I need just a moment. What is that for you? See what I've learned? Hmm. I think that's good for me. That I'm trading, you know, like Whirling Death, very valuable card. We're only getting rid of a little two drop. I think that's good for me. History forgets, but the Black Rose remembers. The Black Rose remembers. I don't want to eat whatever woke you up. Smoke and mirrors. All right, not the best choices again. Um, we're we're really struggling of like finding like top end cards, right? Because they're gonna like start playing like a bunch of big overwhelm stuff, and so like how do we really deal with that? Like a one man two two doesn't just playing a zenith blade doesn't really, but the zenith blade does draw another card. We can play the desert naturalist, but I don't I don't really have like a you know anything to like make a rock bear right now. Um, I guess we're just skipping again. So these have been some pretty poor predicts that we're just been like skipping all these predicts. Yeah, they just never don't have Ruin Runner, unfortunately. Destroy a mana gem. So that was nice, but see what I've learned. Hmm. Man, that's that's a great draw. Wow, that's I mean, well, not a great draw. You know, like I didn't say like they're drawing, but that's a great card. And that's another great card. I could like hourglass my thing and then naturalize it. Naturalist dead. This is pretty rough. 
We just haven't drawn anything anything really that powerful. Man. <laughs> I would love to draw like the two mana draw card. Right? Like that that landmark. Where we play that, then we play naturalist, make it a five four. That would be nice. You've got a problem, I've got a price. So you think they have the four mana fight spell also? Because I think I'm going to go shape, like, I think I just go shape stone, siphoning strike. If they have the four mana fight spell also, we lose the game. But it doesn't look good for me anyway. For winning this game. Yeah, so so much for being a landmark deck. Hmm, they have right negation. All right. Sometimes you only draw one and two mana cards. It's nice to have a couple. You know, it's nice to have those early, but sometimes you don't really find any any power. Yeah, I I forgot about the spell shield. I did as we were just kind of talking about stuff. I just completely forgot about spell shield. So yes, obviously. That card would not have worked as is, because Spell Shield. That's my bad. So they did not even need to write a negation. Okay, so we can go with the Preservarium next turn and then Naturalist it and turn it into a 5-4. But I already do have, like, Golden Ambassador into Talia for those turns. I think that's still probably my best option. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to eat whatever woke you up. I turn it like so. Um, you know, saving the, the Spirit Fire is going to be whenever they have... You know, like, this being burst speed is honestly a really big deal with, like, Burblefish, because sometimes, like, they play, like, a, you know, like, a Burblefish. Like, this has definitely happened. Like, you have Avalanche, and you, like, don't quite, you know, you wait for them to continue to playing more Burblefishes and Poro Cannons, you know, Poros and stuff, so you don't quite use your Avalanche, but then they, you know, they don't play in the Avalanche, they attack, and so all that kind of stuff is a mess. So it's, so that's something that's really nice about the Spirit Fire being burst speed, is that you get to cast it during combat. You don't you don't have to worry about them. You know, you play it and then they just play more burble fishes afterwards to attack you. Got any Nexus healing up in here? They discarded another Fizz. They did not want to rally with that Fizz. They wanted to just throw that Get Excited out there right then. Which should probably mean Purple Fishes. Draw three, because it's stress testing. I'm ready. It certainly feels like it's going to be the Spirit Fire turn. If I don't cast Spirit Fire this turn, then Twist of Fate levels up. But I guess they're willing to just pass, get rid of this Fleeting card. Shuffle. I don't know why I cast it right then. Again, I should cast it during combat. 
do anything first or just hit for nine. Turn it like so. Let me add That's not one of their any of their three fleeting cards. I'm thinking like this thing and then Talia copy this thing. That's what I'm thinking. Right here. Instead of Veil Temple. Siphoning Strike's one of our very few removal spells, so we're going to keep that. Three landmarks. New hand every single turn. Fortunately, it looks like we're dead. You never know. I don't... I mean, I... I like, what, what five cards could they possibly have that don't kill us? Or like, how do we not die? Like, I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> I, don't, I can't even think of, like, five cards that don't kill us. Elusive, still strong. Like, they played yep. the zero mana card to make the two Poros. If they have no other spells in hand, you just don't do that. You just play your other units. So there's no way that... Yeah. Fizz stands for Fizzle. Hmm. The Spear of Fire has been good. I need more of those doesn't help against um, doesn't quite help against uh, suit up though I don't want to meet whatever woke you up I can do this it can be undone. I have my orders. The desert by my side. The fuse. All right, take four. I'm going to save this spell mana for the spirit fire. That's interesting. All of this is ours. Uh, of course I'm ready. Remember the objectives. The few for the many. Right, so right now I'm taking five going down to seven. So they, they're just telling me I got seven points of burn. Where are all the Lissandra Trundle decks? 
<laughs> that's what that's what we need to play against with this. We need to play against Lissandra Trundle. Something that's not killing us super fast. Something that like we can use all of these uh, cards and resources and landmarks that'd be really good against. Keep your eyes on the horizon and your feet on the ground. Oh, I can't wait. Who's with me? Kappa, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate that. That's our very first sub of the day. I forgot about uh, switching this sub goal from yesterday. That three, we had three subs yesterday. So that's our first sub today. Thank you, Kappa. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, that's going to leave a bruise. Sometimes trying new stuff isn't, you know, trying new stuff, you don't always win a lot. I guess that's what I want to say. You know, you don't always win a whole bunch whenever you're just trying new stuff and, and trying to build, um, you know, new new decks and everything. And... And Talia, I, I've been, you know, this is only my second time playing a Talia deck. Struggled again here. Um, you know, we definitely looks like we needed a lot more Nexus healing because we have none. And also, um, you know, some more removal. The Spirit Fire was awesome for us. That was really good. I was kind of relying on that a bit too much. And um, honestly, a card like Ancient Hourglass, like, right? Like, I love this card, but it does it didn't do anything because none of our opponents were really, like, we, they weren't trying to kill my Talias, right? Like, they were just killing me. And so, if your opponents are all just killing you and not even trying to use any removal or anything on your stuff, then, you know, your Ancient Hourglass isn't going to be doing a whole lot. Um, you know, a card like Shapestone, my opponents were just killing me. didn't really help that much. So, I guess, yeah, I guess we'd have to kind of... You know, again, we got to keep on, keep on uh, trying to keep on reworking stuff. Uh, if you do want to play Targon with this deck, obviously Targon has tons of Nexus healing options, lots of different lifesteal units and guiding touches and star shapings and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I wanted to play more Sharima cards and play Gold Ambassador because I, I love Gold Ambassador. I think this card's awesome. But against these hyper aggro decks that are just killing you super fast, you maybe don't even really have time. So this is so basically just like my, you know, the other Talia deck we played, it had Zoe in it and we really struggled against aggro. And that's just kind of the same thing again here. You know, we just like those last few matches, whether it was just a whole bunch of, you know, elusives like that Twisted Fate Fizz deck can be really aggressive, especially with Fizz and um, Suit Up. Sorry, that's that's the name of the card, especially Fizz, Suit Up. Um, and, and my opponent had all three Fizz. Right, because they, they had their first Fizz that we killed. They also discarded a Fizz to get excited and then played a new Fizz after we killed their first one. So they had all three of their Fizz in hand. And yeah, with suit ups and everything. That can be pretty tough. So yeah, there's Talia has a lot of potential. I think Talia is a really strong card, but it's not easy to build around it. It's not easy to play either. And so we still gotta keep on looking of like how can we how can we like play a bunch of landmarks and not die to these fast aggro decks. And maybe that is that you just have to go, you have to just even keep on going into um, Targon and not play Desert Naturalist, not play Golden Ambassador, you know, obviously not really play like Siphoning Strike for those, for how aggressive those decks are. And, you know, then, and just play your Targon, you know, like maybe, maybe we need more like lifesteal stuff in Targon, right? Like maybe we need more of, uh, you know, like your, your uh, Guiding Touch, your Star Shapings, your Fangs, um, maybe even pairing... Solari Sunforger, like maybe you got to be doing like that, you know, Sunforger and Fangs instead of these four drops. Um, but, you know, I want to play the, I want to play these new cards. I like both of these cards a lot, but it, they're just not the best options against aggro. You know, playing a four mana three two is not the best option against aggro, but I, I think it's a really cool card and really strong. Wish we could stop getting paired against aggro with our Talia deck, but unfortunately we don't get to choose what we play against. All right, but anyway, um, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Hopefully you enjoyed the deck, enjoyed the gameplay. Um, you know, we had a lot of cool things that we did, had a lot of cool decisions, um, and, you know, a lot of tough decisions, too. This is this is not an easy one to sequence, especially the early turns with all these one and two mana cards and, like, how to, how to sequence them. Also not easy. So 
potential here, just like the last Talia deck, got to figure out how do we stop all these aggro decks. It's it's like I don't play against that much aggro unless we're playing this one, it seems like. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's it here for Golden Talia. Um, so everybody on YouTube, uh, leave those comments. What, what are you, what are you doing? Are you, you know, are you just going to Feli Like maybe you just have to play a You know, I didn't really want to play a right. Cause I, I wanted to do this. I guess that's, that's probably the option, the answer, the real answer, right? Like I wanted to go Talia and stuff, but probably the answer is just, you have to play a in here. Cause a Feldios is completely busted and has all this stuff. And then you get your life steal and, um, you know, you get all that. So maybe, I guess that's probably the answer is you just have to play a instead of like cool cards. Yuck, but I guess that's what you gotta do. Um, all right, but well, that's it here for Golden Talia. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.